So we're at the aquarium shop right now. My name's Tommy from Tank Missions. We're gonna do a fish unboxing. We picked up a shipment for Andy. Some of the stuff in here is for our customers as well. So I know that we have some really cool fish in here. I don't know what Andy ordered yet. But I figured we would do a little unboxing video and we can kind of tell you about some of the fish too and give you our experience with them. This is a pink tail trigger. Really beautiful fish. Is that coming up on video? What if we go this way? Yeah. So pink tail triggers are some of the most reef safe triggers other than the genus Anthicthes. They tend to be pretty peaceful, although every once in a while you'll get one that's aggressive. Um, but a lot of times you can get these to do fine in a mixed reef aquarium. This is a Borbonius Antheus. This is apparently a medium large. Really pretty fish though. Great reef tank fish. Just make sure you have a lid on your aquarium. No aggressive fish in the tank. Make sure you feed really frequently. As they get bigger, they get absolutely gorgeous, really like unusually patterned fish also. There you go, another pink tail trigger. Look at the pink on his tail. That's a nice one. Alright, a bunch of Florida fighting conks. Those are great cleanup crew. They help to stir your sand bed. So this is a Fiji blue spot puffer. These are unfortunately not reef safe. They will go after invertebrates. Really pretty fish though, like puffer fish, uh, or like all puffer fish, they have great personalities, very smart fish. They'll interact with you, they'll know who feeds them, who cleans the tank. Tons of personality. That's a reef safe starfish. Green bubble tip anemone. Sometimes they down color when they ship, but in a couple weeks they'll be nice and bright. This is a Kupang damsel. This is kind of a cool fish. Most damsels get really aggressive. Uh, they often, you know, they get a little bigger too, three, four, five inches. These stay small, maybe two inches max. Um, they're pretty easy to pair also, and they'll lay eggs really readily in aquariums. Uh, there's also some, some people say that they'll eat flatworms, so if you have a flatworm problem in your tank, you can try some of the Kupang damsels. Tons of color too. Flame angelfish. This is a lot of people's favorite fish, or the fish that brings a lot of people into the hobby. Really beautiful, unfortunately often not reef safe. Paragraphs. Oh, here we go. Look at the color on that one. These get to be about four and a half, five inches long. They tend to do better if you can feed them pretty frequently. Uh, make sure that you treat them for flukes. And uh, if you can, put them in a more subdued, lit tank, at least initially, to let them settle in. We got a couple purple-sided fairy wrasses. We actually ordered one male and three females of these. We'll be able to do a harem in a 400-gallon reef tank that we maintain. Next box. This is, ooh, there's a big bag. This is always fun. I miss doing this. Oh my goodness. That is a cloudy bag. Uh, I think it's just they, they put opaque there's extra bag in here. Oh, they, is this a trigger fish? Yeah, because they'll bite the bag when they're being shipped and then you get a fish with no water. Andy, did you order a giant Huma Huma Nuka Nuka Apua? Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. Wow. From Africa, Say that twice. Oh, from Africa? From Africa. So it, is it the same name then? Probably it not, is. right? Well, no, I don't know. Same species, but. Same species. Sorry, can you give me that name again? Huma Huma Nuka Nuka Apua. The state fish of Hawaii. That's a really pretty one. Here, I can flip the bag real quick. You might be able to get a better shot. No? Oh, there we go. 
That's a good fish. Really pretty fish. They can be real aggressive. Definitely not for a reef tank. Nice big predator fish all the tank. This is a long spine urchin. Those are pretty cool. Great reef awesome. cleaners, great algae eaters. Algae eaters, yeah. Another one of those. Fairy grass. Another urchin. Ooh. Okay, this is an exquisite fairy grass. I think this is Indian Ocean. Again, a lot of the fish down color when they're shipped. They've been pitch black um, in a bag. But in a couple days, this will be extremely vibrant. The greens and the pinks under here get really bright on this fish. Oh, these are so cool. I don't know if it'll pick up. Down in the bottom corner? Yep, so that's a harlequin shrimp. Um, so people will often buy these because they have Asterina starfish in their tank and they've decided that they're a pest and they want to remove them. Um, these only eat the tube feet of starfish. So super specialized animals. And even a small one like this can flip a surprisingly large starfish. Um, unfortunately, once you get one of these and they've eaten all your Asterinas, you either have to rehome it or you have to start buying starfish to feed them because they won't adapt to any other foods. Another one of those harlequin shrimp. Yeah. Is that coming out in the video? Lionfish. Great for a predator tank. These you can actually keep in reef tanks. You just can't keep them with anything that'll fit in their mouth, fish-wise. But they're not going to bother coral. I've seen some pretty cool displays with lionfish in them and tons of usually soft coral, xenia, leathers, star polyp, copper band butterfly. Uh, these are often touted as aptasia eaters, although in my experience, the ones that eat aptasia usually end up also eating other corals in the tank. So if you do get these to control your aptasia, you should probably be ready to remove it if you need to have another home lined up. This is a pair of Hawaiian flame wrasse. And again, they're down colored right now. This is the female, the smaller one. Which and one is this? These are the Hawaiian flame wrasse. This is a holy grail fish for a lot of reef keepers. These are also going in the same 400 gallon reef tank that that Borbonius anthias is. Hmm? Why is it a holy grail fish? Oh, they're just, uh, I mean, it's not, it's not gonna show up well you know, in the bag straight after shipping, but the colors on these are remarkable, especially once they're uh, settled into the tank and they're calm and confident, and especially when you get a male and a female, the males get so deep and vibrant. A couple more butterflies. These are the copper butterflies, right? That's a copper band. This is a pearl scale. The copper band is over here, the one with the long nose. Yep. And this guy? Pearl scale. Pearl scales tend to be pretty hardy too. A lot of butterfly fish have a bad reputation of not doing well, and a lot of that probably comes to them coming in with flukes and then not being treated for flukes. Um, but the pearl scales are really hardy. The secret last box. Oh, there is some really cool stuff in here. We recently set up a cichlid aquarium, 75 gallon, sorry, 80 gallon. It's gonna be getting five to seven peacock cichlids. See the peacock cichlids, it's an African cichlid. Uh, they have a great variety of different colors. You can keep them in groups pretty well. You wanna make sure that you don't have too many that look similar. Got some a mono shrimp. These are great algae eaters for freshwater planted tanks. And 
I really like the bamboo shrimps. I would have preferred if they shipped them in two separate bags, if they weren't holding on to each other to feel comfortable. Bamboo shrimps are filter feeders, which is pretty cool. They have these little flayed out fan-like appendages that they'll stand in the current and just grab stuff out of the water. Um, so they tend to do better in larger tanks with uh, driftwood. This is, these two are gonna be going into a 150 gallon planted discus aquarium. So that's it for this shipment. I hope you enjoyed. Let us know if you'd like to see more videos like this. Make sure to subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment if you wanna see more of these types of videos. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care.